now let us see how industrialization developed in the colonies here industrialization developing in the colonies in the sense industrialization developed in india so when we discuss about industrialization again we in the previous part of the lesson has analyzed and understood the different factors and the reasons before the industrialization proto industrialization period then the setting up of the factories discovery of the new technologies and all these things so this time our discussion will be limited and restricted only in context to the indian development that too specifically on the textile industries so the indian textile industries would be the key agenda and how did the indian textile industries got emerged out with the help of the industrialization whether it was favored or it got degraded that we shall analyze now so the age of indian textiles indian textiles indian fabric indian cotton indian cotton has been the finest cotton in the world no other country in the world produces such a fine quality of cotton available in the world market so indian cotton has got a special significance and a fine fabric nature when compared to the other fabrics available in the market so during the ancient period on the coarser cotton indian cotton has been known to the world by different corners especially from the west and the northwestern boundaries of india trade the armenians and the persians used to take the indian cotton bales through the northwestern route crossing the himalayas and also crossing the deserts for a very long time and then taking it to the western arab countries and also we have a vibrant trade on oceans especially via arabian sea from gujarat and surat and we also have ports at musoli patnam on the koramandal coast and hugli on the kolkata belt region so it's not only from the west it is from the northwest and also via to the east we have the spreading of indian cotton to the other corners of the world like from the armenians and the persians taking from the northwest through the deserts crossing the himalayas to the other countries gujarat and surat on the western part musoli patnam koramandal coast and hugli on the eastern part taking the indian cotton to the world market in 1750s till that time the indian cotton was the dominant one indian traders were the dominant traders to sell their cotton in abroad but in 1750s the europeans started to arrive towards india and started to put their footprints in a very large manner they initially got many concessions from the local courts and later on they started to establish monopoly on the trade so in surat prior to the arrival of the english people or the european nationals the trade account or income was around rupees 16 million rupees which has been slashed down to 3 million rupees by the end of the 17th century the drastic fall down of the trade can be noticed here so with the arrival of the europeans the trade started to slash down that is an important understanding of this point here and when we move on to the villagers how did the villagers get affected with the arrival of the europeans the villagers got either migrated themselves because the britishers forced the villagers to pay or to sell the cotton at very less cost the first point then we shall move to the next point the villagers they revolted against the britishers policy and sometimes they even opposed the company officials who came to give advances for them or asking to repay back the amount of money or refusing to pay the loan amounts by the villagers so here we need to understand the logic here is how or why did the villagers started to oppose 
the actions of the Britishers. What made the villages to get migrate from their own hometowns to the other places? Why are the villages getting angry against the company officials? Why are they revolting against them? Why are they refusing to pay the loans to them? So in order to understand this one, the first logic is that the company officials initially started to make a treaties with them or a tie-ups with them saying that they need this much of requirement so they will pay certain amount in advance. Once the amount of money is paid in advance for them, that's like a binding the people in order to go and sell their product in the market. Though the product in the market may be costly, but because they are receiving initially advance amount for them in a very low amount, so they have to sell their product to the particular British or the European companies only. So this made the villagers to feel very much depressed and restrained because the cost of the Indian cotton is very high in abroad that everybody knew that and Indians have been part of the trading communities from the very olden times. So they all knew what is the value of cotton of India in abroad. So when they were paid in very less amount, the villagers started to migrate the village, the people started to revolt against them, the villagers started to oppose them and sometimes they openly declared that they were not ready to pay any kind of amounts back to the British company officials. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.